it's relevant because I think these characters are timeless. I think that we all, people watching this play often comment on how they can see their father in Willie Loman, or they can see themselves in Willie Loman, or they can see themselves in Linda. I think, I know myself, I can see a member of my family or someone I know in all of these characters. Specifics of it, that it seems to me um, the genius of the play and the reason why it transcends decades, and I believe, as I said to Scott the other day, that it will resound 200 years from now as a great play is because it tells a very specific, particular story that somehow has wrapped up in it all of the universal qualities and elements of the basic human experience of love and family and mistakes and sons and fathers and pain and and longing and work and desire and just all those things that we all fight for all the time that whether it happens in 1949 and it involves a Studebaker or whether it happens in 2009 and involves something much more recent uh, still resounds across the ages. But my, my wife overheard me and she goes, this is a little too close to home. Like, for example, my brother moved out here. We're in business together. And believe it or not, it's a sports-based business. <laughs> and he's, o he's hap. He's always the one saying, it'll be all right. We just need a little more time. It's going to be, you know. And I'm, I'm kind of the Biff character in real life, kind of depressive, sort of going, oh, my God. But, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think those things, kind of going back to what Marion said, too, is what transcends time. Those relationships exist everywhere. chicken in the show? Yeah, then Camilla <laughs> will be on stage. <laughs> I think I think the bag of baggage treatment for this play, while it may not be as giant transformation that some of the other plays have been, I mean, we're not making it a cartoon and we're not cross-gender casting and we're not setting it in space, but... I <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Is there time? I think we might... <laughs> This one is just tearing it down to its simplest form that it's become this masterpiece of American dramatic literature and it's so revered and it's easy, I think, and we've gotten this note from Scott often. It, it's not, it, to us it can't be this grand story, it's just a story about a family in Brooklyn and I think that's what we're trying to tell, just the simplicity of the story and breaking it down without the grand sets and the grand effects and all of that, just the simple human story of it. I think, I think that's probably the bag and baggage treatment, in my opinion. We've got a simple story, we're telling it very simply, and I'm pushing the actors to make sure that they're feeling it every single moment. How, it, uh, it's, it seems like we're getting actually more to what he Wanted. Like when you read even in the play how he describes the set, but there's not much there. Mm. Um, and when you, when he, reading interviews with him, when he talks about the play, he'll say it's simple. It's about his last day. Like he, he often reiterates how simple the story is. They can expect to be moved. I think they can expect to understand something differently in this play and in this production on an emotional, visceral level and not on necessarily an intellectual level. I think that they can expect to see characters that are truly human in the ways in which they are conflicted and messed up. Family, but also moved in the pain of it. I mean, there's, it's just so profoundly painful. And I know most, if not all of us, have a hard time getting through rehearsal without some tears including our director, which is I made a stone unusual. <laughs> if anybody has come in to the Venetian oh, before yeah. to see a bag and baggage show, they, you know, it, we pretty much standard, you, you know, the audience sits out there and everybody else is up here and we sort of do it like that. The way, the way our grandfathers used to do theater, you know, uh, we're not doing it like that this time. I think aud audiences can expect to be very surprised um, by the way in which we're using the theater 
the way in which we're using um, sort of lines of communication between the actors. It's not, I guess, it's easy, fair to say, it's not your mom is death of a salesman in terms of its staging. And I, I mean, I think that's, it's kind of uh, the mission of this company as a whole is that we take these pieces that are, you know, text-based classic pieces of dramatic literature and provide them new so that you get to see them again for the first time. It's a little catchphrase I know I've seen on our literature before, but... Chicken is so hard to connect with. Yeah. <laughs> Stop calling me the chicken. Hey, you know what? <laughs> listen, but don't listen. Yeah, that one's hard. Yeah, that's the hardest one for me, I think, so far. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are lots of challenges, emotional and and just technical and stuff. But the hardest one is having to hear, but not listening, or vice versa, or something, where you have to be aware of everything. But at the same time, the character is not listening because these are people that don't listen. What you have like that spark in you from moments, and you put that into like I have to watch this counter now. And by not having these things, the spark sits in you, and then Scott says, "Sit there, be still." <laughs> yeah. And so like Feel that it. sort of erupts. I think if I mean if you're in the moment and you're going there, it it, it resonates from you in behavior, in behavior, yeah. or just sitting still. Mm -hmm. It just like it comes out of you because you're not able to play the football or. Surreal realism. <laughs> I didn't roll my eyes before, but I'm going to roll my eyes. <laughs> I think people should come and see the show because I think it is uh, an incredibly brave choice for a young theater company in the suburbs <laughs> to start a season with Death of a Salesman. And I think if anybody wants to support uh, bold choices. Uh, if anybody out there who has the opportunity to support art, which is challenging and engaging and interesting and not the standard and not the usual, if that's the kind of theater that people want to see in Hillsborough and in Washington County, this is the place to do that. Because I think, I think we are creating a reality that is harsh, and stark, and simple, and rare, huh. and it'll be worth seeing. And it's going to be good. And right? Yeah. It's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> Final question. Wait, you notice, Pop? <laughs> <laughs>